Hari Om. Welcome to this Satyananda Yoga style video class. The, it is a general class and the class is at the beginner's level. Please come into a meditative posture, a comfortable sitting position. Bring stability and balance as much as possible. Use eventually a pillow under the buttocks if necessary. And when the knees are still not onto the floor, then have some additional pillows also between the knees and the floor. Hands are in chin mudra, thumbs and index fingers touching. Palms are open and then gently close the eyes. Awareness to the meditative posture. Feel the body and the contact with the floor. Feel that the weight is even. Right buttock, left buttock. Spine is straight. Awareness into the whole right leg and foot and into the whole left leg and foot. Feel that there's balance in the positioning. Going up the spine at the height of the shoulders, feel that the shoulders are a little bit backwards, downwards, so that the chest is open. Awareness into the whole right arm and hand and into the whole left arm and hand. Feel that there's balance in the positioning, that the weight of the hands on the legs feels even. Awareness to the hand mudra, chin mudra, the gesture of higher consciousness. Feel the thumbs and index fingers touching. Going to the neck and head, make that the neck and head are in one line with the rest of the spine. Chin is a little bit inwards. Facial muscles are soft. So check around the mouth and the eyes, gently soften. And going to the crown of the head, feel as if the crown of the head is extending towards the ceiling. As if the body is gently pulled up, steady and still, no movement. Feeling the body like a rock. Or like a mountain. And in that stillness then find the movement of the natural breath. Gently follow, no change, no control, just going with the natural flow of the breath. And just see how the breath is right now at this moment. Fast, or slow, deep, or maybe shallow? Is the breathing even or not so even? And then to start, we will chant the mantra OM three times. So letting go of the awareness on the breath and bring the awareness to the eyebrow center and try to keep the awareness there during the chanting of the mantra OM. So take a deep breath in. Oh. Second time. Oh. And the last time. And then 
also for today listen to your body honor and respect your body work within your current capacity work to a point of tension not to pain if there are any contraindications they will be given throughout the practices and the breathing will be through the nose unless directed otherwise so gently open the eyes and prepare for the first asana so first asana is yanunamam and uh, for yanunamam come into the basic sitting position parambik stiti with the legs stretched out forwards so release uh, put any pillows uh, away sitting in the basic sitting position and uh, lifting the hands from the floor uh, yanuna mam knee bending working on the kneecap uh, exercising the knee joint exercising the muscles of the side the quadriceps so anytime and ready bending the right leg clasping the hands around the shin or under the thigh pressing against the lower abdomen on the right side and breathing in stretching leaving the leg from the floor just continue up to five rounds bending on out breath and on in breath stretching feel that movement of the knee joint feel that also pressing against the lower abdomen on the right side the ascending part of the colon last uh, part of the digestive tract think about the lower back keep the lower back nicely straight one more round breathing out pressing there and again lowering the right leg onto the floor continuing with the left leg gently pressing and stretching on in breath breathing out go on your own breath in your own tempo as long as the right and the left side have the same amount of rounds so stretching so awareness is on the movement the breath and the counting so working on the descending part of the column here again think about the lower back make that the lower back stays as straight as possible keep those sitting bones on the floor and releasing coming back into parambik stiti in the basic sitting position and yanu falak is the kneecap contraction it is uh, again making the knee joint or the area around the knee joint as strong as possible to relieve the kneecap uh, from the heavy duty work that it needs to go through all day through so gently pulling those upper leg muscles the quadriceps on and at the same time the kneecap will be pulled upwards relaxing releasing letting go and the kneecap will go in its normal position again contracting maybe count for a count of five when doing it uh, outside of the class uh, it's possible to keep a count of 10 or 15 make sure also that there is a good relaxation in between make sure that is really relaxed to have that um, complete effect of the contraction and then last time one more time contracting there holding for a moment and letting go okay so also this in preparation for the next asana and the next asana is a standing asana so please come into a standing position for tat asana or the palm tree pose 
So Tadasana or palm tree pose, very beneficial for the spine. The spine loves this asana. So to start with, uh, separate the feet a little bit to be more comfortable in the balancing. And then bringing the hands onto the head, interlacing it, palms are on the head. This is starting position. On in-breath, turn the palms of the hands towards the ceiling and coming onto the toes. Breathing out, lowering onto the floor again. So we have to do this again because first try to find a point of focus at eye level. And then anytime when ready, make it dynamically on in-breath, turning the palms outwards, coming onto the toes, keeping that focus and breathing out gently lowering onto the floor again and rest the hands again on the head so go for another round hands on the head breathing in first have that focus mental and physical balance are induced by tatas now feel that stretching also in the spine do one more round and then hold it in the final position, breathing normally and keeping that focus, keeping it light. So strengthening here also the muscles of the legs and gently lowering again and letting go. So this part stretching the spine, but pulling all the vertebras away from each other. Next part uh, is a Tiryaka Tat Asana or the swaying palm tree pose and here working on the intercostal muscles so the muscles that are on the side of the upper body that keep the body in the upright position else it will be a uh, um, position that is not upright so anytime when ready bringing the hands again onto the head interlacing the fingers this time just keeping the soles of the feet onto the floor and anytime when ready breathing in turning the palms towards the ceiling and on out breath lowering the body to the left stretching first there also the ascending part of the column again but especially stretching there those muscles on the upside part of the body, upper part of the body, breathing in to the center and breathing out to the other side. So feel that stretch at the upper side of the trunk, breathing in center and lowering the arms for a moment. Just let them rest onto the head is fine. Anytime when ready for a next round, breathing in, turning the palms towards the ceiling, breathing out to the left, feel that stretch. When there's not enough stretch, just push the hands a little bit more outwards, breathing in center, breathing out, lowering the hands to the left, feel that to the right, feel that stretched on the left side of the upper part of the trunk breathing in and lowering the arms now lowering the arms just lowering them completely so one more round but then keeping the final position so having a few extra breaths in the final position mm, anytime and ready again hands on to the head breathing in and then breathing out going to the left stretching the right side Hold the position for three breaths. So holding the position for three breaths and anytime on out breaths, feel then also that there can be maybe a little bit more relaxation at the same time, a little bit more letting go. Feel again, still that stretch also. So teaching these intercostal muscles, breathing in center when finishing the three breaths and then going to the other side for another three breaths to the opposite side. So reminding these intercostal muscles of the work to be done to make that body in that upright position 
which is a basic necessity for a healthy body having a position that is upright. So make sure that the arms stay level with the ears, yeah, okay, and then releasing the hands and preparing for the third asana, which is really very beneficial for the spine. So first we have the stretching, then the bending, and now the twisting. Kati Shakar Asana or the waist rotation pose. Um, there is a, a point of uh, awareness necessary specifically at the hips. Yeah, uh, The hips are almost to be glued up front so that there is no twist in the knees. This is uh, necessary to make sure that the knees uh, don't get hurt during the process. So try to Keep the hips in that uh, straight position. The twisting is only from the waist. Anytime when ready, bringing the hands on shoulder level to the side. Breathing in here. And anytime when ready, breathing out, bringing the right hand towards the left shoulder, left hand around the waist, following the movement with the head. So looking in the left side, towards the left side, breathing in center and breathing out, the left hand goes towards the right shoulder, right hand around the waist and again twisting the head in the same direction as where the rest of the twist goes to. So in this case to the right, breathing in center again and on out breath lowering the arms. Yeah. So prepare for another round, anytime when ready, breathing in, centering, breathing out, twisting towards the left if doing so, right hand on the shoulder, left hand around the waist, breathing in center. So twisting here the spine, loosening up all these vertebras in the different uh, direction. Also. This is why the spinal cord is addressed and the spinal nerves are activated. Bringing fresh input to the brain is also a good wake up. Is a practice that activates digestion as it is working a lot on the digestive center at the navel area so make this the last round then make sure that the breath is coordinated with the movement again breathing in and lowering the arms and ending the practice and preparing for the next asana so next asana, shavasana or the corpse pose, coming into a laying down position on the back, on the floor. Shavasana is an asana that is used throughout the practices also to rest, a very important practice. So try to consciously let go for a moment and to check, make a little body rotation through the body starting with the whole right leg and foot consciously letting go onto the floor whole left leg and foot relax right buttock relax onto the floor left buttock let go right shoulder letting go onto the floor left shoulder relax Whole right arm and hand, letting go onto the floor, whole left arm and hand, letting go, and the neck and head, surrendering onto the floor. Check again the muscles around the mouth and the eyes, gently soften, just feel that the whole physical body and let go onto the floor. 
And when the body feels comfortable, relaxed, then bring the awareness to the natural flow of the breath. No control, no change, just going with the flow. Just see how the breath is right now at this moment. After a few practices, and maybe compare with how the breath felt in the beginning while sitting. Maybe there's some change in the pattern or maybe not. Or maybe it's the positioning of the body that feels different. And then anytime when ready, letting go of that awareness on the breath, bringing the awareness back to the body in Shavasana, resting on the floor, preparing mentally for the next asana. And the next asana is Uttam Pat Asana or the leg raise pose. For Uttampat Asana, bring the legs together. And as a principle of care to protect the lower back, bring the hands under the buttocks or a little bit aside of the buttocks so that the lower back can be pressed onto the floor. So whenever there is strength necessary, then the lower back will be protected. Leg raise pose, starting with the right leg, keeping the leg straight throughout. So on in-breath, lifting the right leg up into a vertical position. And on out-breath, lowering the leg towards the floor, not touching the floor. So go on the own breath, synchronizing movement and breath. Make another three rounds, so up to five all together. When breathing is slow, movement is slow, then it's maybe less. When it is a little bit faster, just making sure at the end that the count is even on the right and the left side. So let the breath control that movement here, working on the right side of the body, so the right hip and the ascending part of the column. Continuing with the left leg, breathing in, upwards, breathing out, down, not touching the floor, Keep the awareness at the movement, the breath, and the counting, making the same count as on the right side. Feel into that hip joint. And also here working on the descending part of the column. So working here on that last part of the digestive tract is very beneficial also to activate that last part of digestion, strengthening the lower back and the abdominal muscles, and then upon completion, releasing also the hands and let the legs and feet flop out again, coming back into Shavasana. Just for a moment, see if there is any effect of this asana. So maybe it is feeling or any sensation or maybe it is the breath just becoming aware for a moment and then again starting to prepare mentally for the next asana Next asana, Kandrasana or shoulder pose. Bringing the legs together, bending the knees and placing the soles of the feet in front of the buttocks. 
So spread them a little bit hip width so that it's comfortable for the knees. The hands are pointed towards the feet or holding on towards the ankles if possible. It is not necessary. So Kandrasana or the shoulder pose has um, effect on the spine, realigning the spine and is also very beneficial for the reproductive system as well as in male and female. Uh, female in particularly as it helps to uh, coordinate also menstruation. Contraindicated for conditions of peptic or duodenal ulcers or abdominal hernias. So if experiencing any of these conditions then use Shavasana or make the Kandrasana very gentle by only lifting the buttocks a few centimeters from the floor. So very gentle lifting maybe five to ten centimeters like uh, having not that rounding of the spine. Preparing on in breath, the buttocks is pushed up as far as possible and as is comfortable for the body and on out breath lowering the body onto the floor. So do two more rounds in this dynamic form. Let the breath conduct the movement. Breathing in, buttocks is raised up, breathing out, lowering. Keep the breath and body as long as is comfortable. So feel that aligning of the spine and feel there at the abdominal area also that pressure doing one more round and then in a static way meaning breathing normally in the final position so first breathing in coming up into that final position become aware also of those contact points of the body and the floor building there and then Having the awareness on the breath, at the abdomen, working here on the reproductive organs, also having effect at the thyroid gland, so the awareness can also be in the direction of the throat. Kandarasana, having a very good influence also when experiencing back pain can be very relieving for relieving for general back problems and then gently letting go whenever ready and also releasing again the legs coming back into shavasana just for a moment have that awareness on any effect of the asana, maybe having the awareness at that breath at the abdomen, feel maybe the breathing at the abdomen is more clear, more obvious. Any effects of Kandarasana. And then again, letting go of that awareness and gently start to prepare the mind for the next asana, Sukta Udrakasham asana, or the sleeping abdominal twist. In preparation for the twist, again, bring the legs towards each other straight, then bending them and again placing the soles of the feet in front of the buttocks but this time keeping the legs together. Hands are interlaced and placed under the back of the head so interlacing the hands under the back of the head and anytime when ready centering this is the centering the starting position is in breath and on out breath, lowering the legs to the left, facing to the right. So twisting the legs to the left, facing to the right. And on in breath, returning back to the center, breathing in back to the center, 
and on out breaths again, lowering the legs towards the right, facing to the left. So this is one round. Precaution, making that the shoulders stay onto the floor, both sides, especially the side where the legs go down, the opposite side maybe feel like it's coming off the floor. So keeping it on the floor, the legs rather not touch the floor, then uh, losing of that twist and losing into that uh, effect of the twist when the shoulders come from the floor. Anytime when ready, go for another two rounds on your own breath, breathing in center, breathing out, lowering, breathing in center again. Feel that effect also, that stretching of the hips, stretching of the back of the legs, opening up the hips, go on your own breath, own movement. So here twisting those vertebras of the spine, activating there the spinal nerves that go through the spinal cord giving fresh new impulses to the brain. So actually brain is activated when twisting those spinal nerves. So upon completion of these two rounds or more, if it was a little bit faster, prepare for one more static round, breathing in center and then in the final position, doing five breaths, less or more, depending on how fast the breathing is. Anytime and ready, breathing out, lowering the legs to the left and do up to five breaths in the final position. Especially feel also that with each out breath, there is that automatically relaxing of the muscles. So there's a little bit letting go more into that final position. Keep the shoulders, in this case the right shoulder, nicely on the floor. Feel into that twist. Also activating there that area of the navel, activating digestion. Up to five breaths and then whenever finished, coming back to the center. And again, on out breath, lowering to the other side. And again, up to five breaths, less or more, depending on the rhythm of the breath. Again, feel into that area of the hips. Feel that there's a little bit more letting go with each out breath. Twisting of the spine. Activating those spinal nerves. Very beneficial asana when feeling tired to regain fresh energy. Up on completion, letting go again of the posture, coming back into Shavasana, and again having the awareness. See if there's any feeling, any sensation, any effect noticeable of the practice. And then anytime when feeling ready, gently prepare to let go of the awareness of any effects or the breath. And so anytime and ready, turning over onto the stomach for Advasana or the reversed corpse pose, having the arms and hands stretched out forwards and placing the forehead onto the floor, 
when this is not comfortable uh, because of the nose, then place uh, or a little pillow or anything that lifts up the head a little bit from the floor under the forehead uh, when it is really not uh, comfortable with the breathing, then it's possible to have a very thin pillow placed under the chest. Also in Advasana, try to let completely go, so make that the legs and the feet flop out, feel that the buttocks can relax, relax the shoulders, right shoulder, left shoulder, check, arms and hands and forehead, are gently resting onto the floor. Just feel that that whole physical body also can let go in this position. So when the body feels comfortable enough, then bring the awareness to the breath, just following that normal, natural flow and see where the breath, where the movement of the breath can be felt, if it is comfortable or maybe not so. So very beneficial for the back and the neck, especially for sciatica, useful also for stiff necks. Atvasana. Anytime when ready, letting go of that awareness on the breath, awareness back to the body again. And then also again here start mentally preparing for the next asana. Next asana is Makarasana or the crocodile pose. Bringing the head upwards, bending the elbows and placing the chin into the cups of the hands in the crocodile. So recommended here also for lower back pain. Very relaxing asana. Check that the legs are still relaxed and the feet still flop outwards, that the buttocks is relaxed. Feel the contact of the elbows and the floor and feel the contact of the chin in the cup of the hands. Gently close the eyes. And then bring the awareness to the spine and try to make that the pressure in the spine is even as well as in the lower back, middle back, upper back, specifically that lower and upper back. So making pressure less in the lower back, walk the elbows away from the body. So pressure in the lower back is relieved, but then there will be more pressure in the neck. So relieving the pressure in the neck, the elbows are walked towards the body. So for yourself, try to find a position of the elbows where the whole spine feels even and comfortable and relaxed. So while coming into that position and finding the right placement for the elbows, Feel into that crocodile awareness, just very comfortable and relaxed. And when the body feels relaxed enough again, bring the awareness to the breath and just follow the breath as it flows in through the nose, along the spine to the tailbone. And on out breath, from the tailbone up the spine, out of the nostrils. So try to follow that flow of the breath along the spine, relaxing there the whole spine, relaxing the back muscles, very gently following that flow. Each in-breath, 
and each out breath flowing along the spine. And then again on the next out breath, letting go of the awareness on the breath and bringing the awareness back to the body, gently resting on the floor in Makarasana. And again, start to prepare for the next asana, which is Marjari Asana or the catch stretch. So for the cat stretch for Marjari Asana, coming onto all fours, meaning coming onto the knees and onto the hands, so pushing up the buttocks. Try to make that the knees and the hips are in line and also the wrists and the shoulders are in line. So the knees are a little bit separated and also the hands, try to not separate the hands too much, keep them, try to keep them aligned with the shoulders. Majari is uh, again an asana recommended for uh, the back, especially because it is uh, massaging the spine very, very thoroughly. Um, when there is any um, condition of high blood pressure, then try to keep the head in line with the heart. So not having the head coming under the heart. So this would be then the out breath posture. Breathing in, depressing the spine, lifting the head and buttocks up. So depress the spine, bring the head, spine down. Depress the spine, buttocks off, breathing out bringing the back as high as possible like that out that cat with the high back buttocks is inwards head is inwards breathing in depressing the spine head goes up buttocks goes up when it feels comfortable again closing the eyes just continue on your own breath make it a nice flow and again when having the, any condition of high blood pressure, make that, that head stays in line with the heart. Feel into that movement of the spine, massaging the whole spine and also massaging all the internal organs from the lungs, the heart, towards the intestines. All the organs are Having a gentle massage here or activated, feel into the neck also, feel that the neck stays relaxed during the movement, not too much strenuous on the neck, keeping that flow very relaxed. Breathing in, depressing the spine, buttocks up, head up, breathing out having the high, back as high as possible, buttocks in, head in, and then make this the last round. And anytime when ready, again, gently lowering the buttocks onto the feet, coming into Vajrasana. In preparation for Shashank Asana or the hare or rabbit or moon pose. So sitting in Vajrasana with the buttocks on the feet. Shashank Asana is contraindicated for very high blood pressure and a slip disc uh, and vertigo. So in this case, try to keep the head aligned with the heart or if not sure, keeping Vajrasana as the posture to be uh, in. Bringing the legs, uh, bringing the hands up alongside the ears is the basic starting point. Uh, when having a problem with the back, um, lower back pain or any other back conditions, then instead of lifting the arms, 
lower them and slide them over the floor when coming into the forward bend. So lower just for a moment the arms and then slide over the floor coming into a forward bend, keeping that spine uh, straight. When there is that uh, problem with uh, vertigo or with high blood pressure, then use the fists under the forehead to make that the head is not going too much down. So use these two precautions when having any of these conditions. Okay, anytime when ready, breathing in for straightening the spine, coming up into sitting position. Starting with the full practice in this case, then bringing the hands up again along the ears, breathing in and on out breath, keeping the back straight as possible, lowering from the hips, placing the forehead onto the floor, relax the elbows for a moment, and then again, breathing in, straightening the spine, and coming back into the starting position, lowering the arms. So we can do this dynamically by making it two or three rounds and going on your own breath. Anytime when ready again, bringing the hands up, keeping the back straight, lowering so don't forget to uh, leave those arms as levers if you're experiencing breathing in coming into sitting position again for straightening the back coming up again so just slide with the arms over the mat if it is too strenuous so then the arms not necessarily have to go down when make it dynamically breathing out, lowering, relax for a moment, and again on in-breath first, straightening, and then lower the arms again. Final round, one static round, meaning normal breathing in the final position, so coming into the starting position, and on out breath, gently lowering onto the floor and resting there for a moment. So checking the right buttock, consciously relax, left buttock, let go, right shoulder, letting go, left shoulder, relax. Feel that the whole back just can relax, can let go. Arms and hands and forehead are gently resting onto the floor. Feel that complete surrendering, that complete letting go. Also perfect practice when feeling anxious or not really happy. Coming into Shashank gives the possibility to just let go physically and mentally. When the body is still comfortable, then bring the awareness to the breath and just follow the breath at the area of the eyebrow center. Just feel as if each in and out breath flows into that area of the eyebrow center. Very light, very effortlessness, And then anytime and ready, letting go of that awareness on the breath, the awareness back to the body again in Shashank. And in your own time, first straightening the spine and then again coming up into Vajrasana and lowering the hands and releasing very gently the legs. So releasing the legs. Being careful with the knees. Coming in Parambik Stiti, you can place the hands behind the buttocks. And just for a moment, close the eyes. Feel in any effect of the asanas. Also feel maybe into 
uh, legs, maybe if they are sleeping, just breathe into the legs or else very gently moving the toes a little bit or do a kneecap contraction, the Janufalak, just to prepare the legs for the last asana, which is a standing asana. So anytime when ready, coming into a standing position for Ekapada Pranam Asana or the one leg prayer pose. So coming into a comfortable standing position, feel that contact of the soles and the feet and the floor and try to find a point of focus uh, at eye level and also a point that will not be moving. So keeping the focus there during the practice, bringing the weight onto the left leg, releasing the right the weight on the right foot and then see what is appropriate lifting the foot from the floor and placing the sole into the ankle or on the shin or on the inside of the upper thigh so avoiding the knee make sure that the foot is not pushing out the knee because that would be not appropriate for the kneecap. Hands are in prayer position in front of the chest. Keeping that focus, make sure that the leg that the weight is on is soft, meaning that it's not locked so that the kneecap is pushed backwards. No, having the knee soft bend just a tiny bit so that the muscles will do the heavy work gently releasing and then bringing the weight feel again that contact of the whole foot and the floor bringing the weight until the right foot lifting the left foot so placing it inside ankle or inside shin or upper thigh whatever is appropriate try to not hold on to anything really try to go by own means making that the shoulders are a little bit backwards so the chest is open keeping the knees soft and again gently releasing so another round and in this round maybe balancing out the time of standing by counting so start with the side that was most difficult and try to count up till a count of 10 or up till a count of 15 depending on how fast the counting is see when losing the balance then just continue with the other leg and do the same count yeah balancing out the time there so anytime when ready bringing the weight onto the side that is preferable make that the knee is nicely turned outwards a little bit so that the hips is open keeping the knee soft so tatasana developing there obviously the nervous system making that body and mind can become still and steady also working here a little bit on the bones against osteoporosis as the weight is increased on the bones making that circulation in the bones will take place very gently anytime when wanting to release gently again release the leg and continue with the opposite leg keeping that point of focus 
making sure that the knee is soft shoulders are a little bit backwards so awareness on the counting and on that stillness becoming completely still physically and mentally So when has come to an even count, then letting go and just stand here in a standing Shavasana. Legs, feet can be a little bit separated so there is uh, more stability. Just closing the eyes for a moment and see if there's any effect of that balancing practice or maybe just an overall awareness or feeling and then whenever feeling ready letting go of that awareness and preparing mentally already for pranayama or the breathing and then also whenever ready coming into a comfortable meditative posture again for the practice. So preparing for pranayama or the breathing practices by coming into a comfortable crossed leg position again, making sure that the knees are coming onto the floor, use as much pillows again that are needed to make the posture stable and balanced so that there is all the attention for the breathing. Breathing the natural breath awareness and abdominal breathing today. So when the body is comfortable, bring the hands in Gyan Mudra, thumbs and index fingers touching with the palms downwards onto the legs eyes are gently closed become aware again of the meditative posture feel that the pressure is even on the right and the left buttock spine is straight feel the balanced position of the legs and feet the arms and hands and the balanced position of the head on the spine and when the posture feels comfortable then bring the awareness again to that natural breath and just take a few settling breaths following that natural flow no control no change just going with the flow relaxed and then whenever ready start to follow that pathway of the natural breath by following the air on in breath as it flows into the nostrils to the back of the throat passing the throat passing the lungs pushing down the diaphragm making the belly go outwards and on out breath diaphragm goes back into place again air is expelled through the lungs throat out of the nostrils gently following that flow on in breath as the air flows into the nostrils back of the throat passing the throat the lungs pushing down the diaphragm making the belly becoming big and making again a flat belly on out breath when diaphragm goes up and air is passing again through the lungs throat out of the nostrils following very carefully that natural pathway of the breath 
And then on one of the next in breath, keeping the awareness at the abdomen, at the navel. And start to follow the breath at the navel, feeling that on in breath, the navel is pushed away from the spine and on out breath that the navel is drawn towards the spine. On in breath, navel is pushed away from the spine, making a big belly. And on out breath, navel is drawn towards the spine, making that the belly becomes flat again. Only movement is at the abdomen, the chest and the shoulders are still. Following that flow, making that the movement is only noticeable at the abdomen. And then on one of the next out breaths, count the length of out breath. And on one of the next in breaths, count the length of in breaths. And then try to make a count that is even. Making the count even for as well as in-breath and out-breath. Balancing out. In and out-breath. So making a count that is easy, doable, that is comfortable, that will have no strain on the lungs. When it feels that it is too much, then just take a number off. And when it becomes too easy, then add a number following that flow. Abdominal breathing, activating there the prana, the energy making that it flows through the whole body also into the extremities the feet the hands the head making that circulation of energy complete abdominal breathing making sure also that the out breath is complete so that all the carbon dioxide is expelled and that there is space again for fresh new oxygen nurturing the whole body giving energy to the whole body so abdominal breathing can be used as regular natural breath as it will help also with the digestion and then anytime when feeling ready letting go of the counting first keeping that abdominal breathing but letting go of the counting and then on one of the next out breaths, also letting go of that abdominal breathing and just let the breath go wherever it likes to go. Natural, relaxed breathing. And just maybe here also for a moment feel into any effect, any feeling, any thought, any effect of that abdominal breathing. And letting go of that awareness, then and mentally start to prepare for the next part, the last part of the class, which is yoga nidra or yogic sleep. And for Yoga Nidra, whenever ready, come again into Shavasana, the corpse pose.
So making the body as comfortable as possible, relaxing. The so making sure that the body is comfortable, remove everything that feels tight. So if there's still a wristwatch or belt that needs to be removed and do so, making that the body can really rest comfortably for this relaxation practice. And when the body feels comfortable, then become aware of the fact that there is no sleeping in the practice if possible and that there's also no movement so just listening to the voice it all is mentally there's no movement in the body and then to start, take three deep breaths and with each out breath, just let go of anything, being it physically, mentally, anything that could be distracting the practice. Just put it aside on out breath, knowing that after the practice, there will be probably still enough time to be busy with it. Three deep breaths breath and then become aware of the feeling of the contact of the body and the floor feeling of the back of the right leg and foot touching the floor feeling of the back of the left leg and foot touching the floor feeling of the back of the right buttock and the floor feeling of the back of the left buttock and the floor feeling of the back of the right shoulder touching the floor Feeling of the back of the left shoulder touching the floor. Feeling of the back of the right arm and hand on the floor. And the feeling of the back of the left arm and hand on the floor. And the feeling of the back of the head touching the floor. Awareness on the sensation of contact of body and floor. And then letting go of that awareness and become aware of the sounds. Sounds that are far away, most far away, and not holding on to any sound, just going from sound to sound. Find a sound, let go, and find another sound. Sounds far away. And letting go of the sounds far away, bringing the awareness inside the area where laying in Shavasana, inside that building, inside the room, trying to find sounds in that area again, finding a sound, letting go and finding another sound in the room, in the house. Sounds in that space. And letting go of the sounds nearby and bringing the awareness into the body, searching for sounds in the body, maybe the sound of the breath or any other sound in the body. Sounds in the body. letting go of the sounds in the body, letting go of the sounds all together and become aware again of the body, the right side of the body, the right arm, the right hand, the right hand thumb. Every time a body part is mentioned, repeat it mentally 
and then let go. Right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm of the hand, back of the hand, right wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, right shoulder, armpit, right side of the chest, waist, hip, upper leg, right knee, shin, calf, right ankle, top of the foot, sole of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Now become aware of the left side of the body. Try to stay awake left side of the body, left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm of the hand, back of the hand, left wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, left shoulder, armpit, left side of the chest, waist, hip, upper leg, left knee, shin, calf, left ankle, top of the foot, sole of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Now become aware of the back of the body, the back of the body, back of the right leg and foot, back of the left leg and foot, back of the right buttock, back of the left buttock, lower back, middle back, upper back, back of the right shoulder, back of the left shoulder, back of the right arm and hand, back of the left arm and hand, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head, the whole spine, the whole spine. Now bring the awareness to the front of the body, the front of the body. Try to stay awake, forehead, right temple, left temple, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, eyebrow center, eyebrow center, right eye, left eye, right side of the nose, left side of the nose, tip of the nose, right cheek, left cheek, right ear, left ear, upper lip, 
lower lip, two lips together, chin, front of the neck, right collarbone, left collarbone, right side of the chest, left side of the chest, center of the chest, center of the chest, navel, groin. Now bringing all body parts together mentally, the whole right leg and the whole left leg together. The whole right arm and the whole left arm together. Back of the body and front of the body together. Neck and head, both arms, both legs, back and front of the body together. One whole body. One whole body. One body. So bringing the awareness again to that natural flow of the breath. And anytime when ready, following the breath as it flows into the nostrils, passing the throat, chest, up till the abdomen. And keep the awareness at the navel. Start counting the breath at the navel. Breathing in, navel rising, count 27. Breathing out, navel falling, 27. Breathing in, navel rising, 26. Breathing out, navel falling, 26. Breathing in, navel rising, 25. And continue to count backwards like this. Try to stay awake, counting the breath at the navel. And letting go of the counting of the breath at the navel and bring the awareness to the breath at the chest. Start to count the breath, breathing in, chest rising, count 27. Breathing out, chest falling, 27. Breathing in, chest rising, 26. And continue to count backwards like this. Try to stay awake, counting the breath at the chest. And letting go of the awareness on the breath at the chest and bring the awareness to the throat. Start following the breath at the throat, breathing in, air passing the throat, count 27. Breathing out, air passing the throat, 27. Breathing in, air passing the throat, 26. And continue counting like this. Try to stay awake, counting the breath at the throat. And letting go of the counting of the breath at the throat, bringing the awareness to the nostrils. Start counting the breath as the air flows into the nostrils on in-breath, count 27. Air flowing out of the nostrils on out-breath, 27. Air flowing into the nostrils on in-breath, 26. And continue counting backwards like this. Try to stay awake, 
counting the breath at the nostril. And letting go of the counting of the breath at the nostrils. Letting go of the awareness on the breath at the nostrils all together and following again that natural flow. Just following again that natural breath and start to deepen that breath. Deeper breathing, bringing movement into the body and bringing movement into the body so to wake up the body. Waking up the body that is still resting on the floor but that is about to end the practice of Yoga Nidra. So become aware of where the body is resting on the floor, the space you're in. Become aware of the outside environment. Here again, the sounds of the day or night. Become aware what day it is and about what time it could be. And then bring the awareness back to the body resting on the floor. Try to recall the positioning of the body, in which direction the feet are, in which direction the head is. The head and the feet of your body that is covered with clothing. Try to remember what clothes you're wearing, the color of the clothes that are covering your body. Your body that is now slowly starting to move. Moving the feet, moving the hands, moving the head. Any bending, any stretching, anything that would be helpful to wake up the body, any twisting, and then in your own time, there is no rush, any time when feeling ready, gently coming into a comfortable meditative posture to end the practice and the class. So again, if not necessary, try to keep the eyes closed. Just make the body comfortable, bring balance and stability again in the sitting. Awareness, bring the hands in, chin mudra with the palms upwards. Awareness to the weight of the body. It's even on the right and the left side. Spine is straight. Feel the synchronized position of the legs, the feet, the arms, the hands, and the balanced position of the head on the spine. Steady and still. And again, in that stillness of the body, then find the movement of the natural breath. Just following that flow and maybe consciously enjoying that flow. The breath that is very important, that sustains our physical life. And then anytime when feeling ready, letting go of the awareness on the breath and bring the awareness to the eyebrow center, and to end, we will chant the mantra Om again three times, keeping the awareness at the eyebrow center. So take a deep breath in. Second time. Oh. And the 
lifetime. And then anytime when ready, gently open the eyes. Hurry on. <laughs>